So your paintings are a translation and autobiography of your daily life. The sense of belonging, whether it's spaces, plants, communities, animals, or even owning your own identity, is something that comes across uh, with determination, but also a very strong tenderness in your work. Uh, could you talk about what these spaces mean for you and how you navigate your relationship with the spaces, but also with the beings who occupy and form these spaces? Yeah, I think I've really come to value sort of community and collectivity um, as a pretty essential component of you know, being a person in this world, basically. Um, I think especially as someone who kind of locates myself like outside of normative expectations and roles that are imposed on me, you know, by society, by virtue of being sort of born as a woman and, and sort of in South Asia in particular, um, the way that these things are coded into our lives and into the way we interact with the world. I think that so many like, you know, single women in the city in Karachi who have kind of created space for me to explore how I can think about my own independence. Sort of over the years, and especially like while I've been living in Karachi, like I've really kind of been very attentive to these spaces and these people and like honestly like been able to do what I do because of them. And I think in some ways the work kind of turns to them as a bit of a celebration at times, as a bit of uh, memorializing at other times. Um, in general, I'm just kind of processing my relationships with the world and the way that my body feels to the world and the people and the beings and the spaces that I encounter and um, yeah, the spaces that really nurture me. Your work also moves into these extremely contrasting spaces from very private ones, such as the bathroom sink, that can accommodate only an individual. And I think you see that where, you know, you're clearly looking down at that um, at that sink. And then um, in contrast to a male-dominated barber shop, such as In Shining, which took me straight back uh, to a photo Kathmandu residency in 2018, when you pointed out the shop to some of us at Patandoka, and for some reason, that just stayed, and that's what I associated shining with. But this this um, aspect of hair and grooming, which seems to be central to some of your paintings, also connects with the way you are situating your body in your work. Mm-hmm. And um, could you speak about how you reference your body and elements of it in your everyday life and also within your practice? I began really thinking about how much of a person's relationship with their own body can be talked about through sort of this idea of like that. And I think it had to do with like my relationship with my own body and and kind of the way that I was thinking and feeling through it, Um, where it felt like it was a space to kind of take ownership of myself and how I was being presented to the world. Um, It was a way to kind of access. Uh, a really visible sort of immediate change in my perception of myself, you know, by giving myself these haircuts in times when I felt like I wanted to feel differently about myself and, you know, a haircut became like the most immediate way to kind of get to that point. Um, It also became a way of kind of accessing vulnerability and shared spaces with other people, like for instance, like friends cutting my hair. Um, you know, became this really beautiful kind of shared intimate act. And then like going to barbers, especially the barbershop that you're mentioning, uh, your body yoga, like that sort of became a completely other kind of a vulnerable, um, also beautiful act of like going into these spaces that I grown up being told are not really for me, that I'm not welcome in, that bodies like mine should not access. And then, you know, finding weirdly this comfort and familiarity and almost like a connection with a total stranger through this like very sort of, you know, mundane act of like getting a haircut and then feeling sort of differently about my body in that space and allowing myself to then, you know, access other spaces based on that experience. I think I've, I've sort of 
have been aware of that also because of the way that I am perceived in public spaces uh, here in Karachi, for instance, where often I be read as a man uh, and people will refer to me as sir. You know, like sometimes I've been asked if I'm a sir or a madam when I'm like out on the street. So, you know, this this kind of like thing that my hair and the way that I present myself, like this confusion that it causes, this kind of like almost like playing with presentation and like people sometimes are uncertain like how to approach you or who you are or how much personal space they should give you or not. Like like one of the things um, in The Shining, for instance, uh, that, that you know, one of the reasons why I wanted to make that painting is because like, yes, it's a public space and yes, it's kind of, you know, these multiple figures within this like small um, barbershop, but it's, it's also a very compressed space. I mean, it, it kind of like, um, like it gets expanded a little bit through that infinity thing that happens through the mirror, but it's a pretty tiny space and there's that moment where like, you know, my figure holding the camera and the figure of the barber, who's like right next to me are like almost touching. And it's just this like really casual kind of like moment of like navigating this very compressed narrow space together in a public way. And, I mean, it, it's, it's an experience that I have often where people will kind of like bump into me or touch me and then, you know, realize that actually I'm not a man and then will apologize. And so I, I'm really interested in how sort of the way that we create our bodies, the way that our hair somehow is portrayed, makes people relate to us differently, makes the experience that our bodies have um, out in the world different. And, and what are the different points of access or education that these different presentations can kind of allow for? I'm going to pick up on the part where you spoke about the camera yeah. uh, because there's this very strong almost photographic narrative in Shining where there's where you can it's a self-portrait of you taking a picture of the barbershop um, but also how even though it's a narrow space it cascades into these multiple views of the facing mirrors which is something that any of us would experience when we went for a haircut. But this almost becomes a metaphor in some way and a reflection that carries into some of your other works that suggests this intervention of the lens as a mode of documentation, perhaps. Yeah. Um, and then just to wrap up, maybe if uh, you could speak about what the intervention of photography does for you in your work, but also the fact that you are, because you are constantly documenting and taking these images, there's obviously this repository of an image archive that you go back to. So how do you draw from it, and um, how do you how do you reference it to translate this into new works or into paintings? And also, are you thinking about something with a particular um, intention for when you are photographing for a painting, or does it just come the other way? Yeah. It's usually the other way around. Like I'm rarely ever taking photographs with the intention of making a painting either. Um, and and you know the, the the timeline of the photograph being taken and then the painting being made, which you know references a photograph, is is usually there's the uh, you know there's usually a, a length of time in the middle. Like I'll kind of go back to images because I also work quite slowly, so. I might make paintings now about things that have happened last year or, or the year before. So, and it's either something about, you know, for instance, in The Shining, about what that image meant to me, um, or, or sorry, what that moment meant to me, like what that experience meant to me, and the image kind of becomes like a way to access that and a way to kind of mediate that memory. Um, or it's, you know, also in The Shining, like a visual idea such as what you're identifying, that cascading mirror kind of effect, um, you know, which for me, like, I, I was just, I, I really love the interior of the barbershop as well. Like, I was just really taken by the way that the space just bends and curves and expands and contracts and, you know, the, the still light in the front, how that kind of becomes a way to anchor all of this maddening information that's happening in the mirror. Um, like, that visual idea really stays and I kind of kept wanting to go back to it and I kept wanting to sort of revisit this sort of like almost like abstraction of information that happens through that mirrored space. So those will be like the two usual things that really draw me to an image and that make me want to sort of translate it into things. 
And in terms of that process itself, it's actually a process that I am sort of, you know, that, that I'm still kind of working through and I'm still kind of figuring out what exactly um, is the role, like, like what exactly is the role of photography in my work. Like so far, it, it, it seems that the camera's eye is very, very attractive to me. Like I really sort of, you know, I, I feel really compelled by what the camera remembers and I find it really hard to resist. So like, you know, the detail and the color and the way that kind of like the space is organized. And that's something that I'm starting to also um, desire some distance from at this point um, in my practice. So, so most of the work in the show does, uh, you know, uh, draw from images of some kind. Some of the works, for instance, will, will you know, I'll use like multiple image references for one painting and then kind of, so I, in, in the work that I'm making right now, since the show has gone up, um, I'm actually working less and less in photographs, or I'm mediating the photographs through a couple of other steps and not directly working on them while I'm painting. For instance, like right now I'm working on a, a series of paintings uh, that refer to like water. And one thing that I've kind of been uh, thinking about a lot is just like how water, like, like the image of water lives inside me as opposed to how it lives through like the lens of the camera. And that's been a really interesting sort of thing to be aware of and, and to work through. So I'm working less and less from photographs because I realized that my own desire to, and, and my own sort of process of remembering what water looks like, how, what, how light reflects off of water, how like the waves form in an ocean and so on. And, and even sort of the, the the lack of position of these things is, is so much more interesting, you know, like trying to sort of remember the color of like a particular memory. Um, there's a lot more that kind of gets mediated, I think, through me. I'm curious about kind of the tension that I feel with my own memory and then with the, the lens of the camera. And yeah, I'm, I'm curious about how that relationship can continue to be mediated and what it is that the camera's eye gives me that my memory can give me and vice versa and how it is that I can kind of take both and work from both and both that serves my babies the best.